Have you managed to retrieve the data from our droid in the Sith base? Excellent. It does not appear to have been tampered with, so the Sith did not manage to copy its contents yet. And now for your information. We are not supposed to speak of this, but since you are a Jedi and we have exhausted all the other options, I think I can entrust you with this. As you know, the Republic is fighting for its very existence against the evil of the Sith Empire. As you also undoubtedly know, we're doing very poorly. We need much in the way of supplies and material to stem the tide of battle and bring us victory. Manan is the sole source of Kolto, the most powerful medical substance in the galaxy. Frankly, we need as much of it as we can get. The Selkath conservatives, with their neutrality treaties, seek to treat the Sith and the Republic equally. This includes Kolto exports. But a few more far-sighted Selkath see that if the Sith are ever allowed to win, the galaxy will be plunged into darkness, and there would be nothing to stop them from taking Manan anyway. So we made a deal. We recently began construction of a secret underground facility to harvest Kolto directly at its source. We also hope to one day be able to synthesize it effectively. Current techniques are insufficient for the task, so we must mine it for now. The amount we take would hardly be noticed, since most is lost naturally before it reaches the surface anyway. We were nearing completion of the base when the digging teams reported some sort of obstruction, uh, an ancient building or artifact, possibly your star map. Transmissions from the base were cut off abruptly after that, and we haven't heard from the station since. As you may have noticed, we're hiring a lot of mercenaries around here. Ostensibly, they're to be shipped off-world to aid in our fight against the Sith, but they're really for another purpose. When we lost contact with the station in the Brackard Rift, we sent our contingent of Republic soldiers down to investigate, none returned. We've tried hiring mercenaries and sending them down as well, but none of those expeditions have returned either. The reason we really sent that droid underwater, and the reason we needed its data back so badly, was to find out what happened to the Rackard Rift station. But now that we have the data back, our operation is in no danger of exposure to the Sith, and now I must live up to my end of the bargain. I took the liberty of having a submarine prepared for your departure. Merely use this card to get past the door behind our Colto packing room and enter the sub therein. It has been programmed to take you down to the station, and also to take you back up should you need something. I would send soldiers to assist you, but we've lost many of ours, and nearly exhausted the mercenary population of this planet. The soldiers we have are barely enough to keep this base secure. The Sith have also noted our interest and begun to bribe mercenaries away from us. Please, find out what happened to the facility. There may be some survivors left down there. Perhaps even the head scientist, Kono Nolan. Good luck in your efforts. I guess Sunri didn't kill the Sith woman after all. Could have sworn he left after the shot, though. I am not for hire. 
guess I'm not surprised. <laughs> That was a truly noble act. The Jedi Council will be pleased. How did you get in? Did they send another submersible? Quick, we have to get out of here. We have to get away. No! No, we have no time. We have to leave now. I managed to close the door after they killed everyone else, but I don't know how long it will hold. The cell calf, they went crazy. They started killing anything that moved. Someone must have triggered the defense systems too, because all the droids activated as well. I was one of the mercs the Republic sent down here to find out what happened. We came down and secured the first couple of rooms. There were bodies everywhere. And the cell calf came out, screaming and croaking their fishy little war cries. They swarmed out and over us. There was no way we could stop them. So we ran. 
him, but hardly any of us made it. I, I locked the door behind us, but, but the others had already left in the submersible. The sharks, the Feroxa out there, and worse. I heard an explosion shortly after the submersible left. They didn't make it. Just food for the sharks and the Silcath. Like us. Back to the surface, yes. But no! There's something out there. It got the other submersible already. We can't leave until you do something. Blow up the entire station, maybe. That might distract whatever it is long enough for us to escape to the surface. But all the machinery and stuff is in the southern half, and that, that's been flooded. There might still be environmental suits around, but... but the cell calf might have laid their eggs in them. No! I locked the door so the cell calf won't get in. If you open it, we're all done for! If you go in there, you're dead. You're all dead! If you want to die, then go. You won't hear me mourning for you. I'll stay here and be safe until some sort of real rescue comes. Oh, my God. 
And I said... Fishy, 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 <laughs> come and eat me too. <laughs> you can't get me, little fishy. Nothing here. I'm safe behind my walls. Investigate? You're just like the others. Water for the cell calf. Walk and fish next. Trump, trump, trump. If you can run, you might be fast food. The cell calf. I've started killing everybody. I locked myself. I'm safe in here. Nothing can happen in here. No fishy food. No. The ones left in the south part of the base might still be alive, but where the culto is, few fishes there. Many, many, many fishes in between the water. No, no. Only the ones left. Don't know. Go ask them. <laughs> when the demon screamed, it shook every mind in the station. We fell to the ground but survived. No, only the. Bye bye. Go look for fishy people. Yes? How can I help? Then I suggest... Is somebody out there? Fishy? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? I walk out and bam! Cell cap swap. No, 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 my friend.
Cass, I can see that much. Are you another rescue crew? 
I'm a merc the Republic hired a couple days ago to investigate. But all we found was a bunch of insane cell calf killing everything that moves. All my companions are dead. The cell calf swarmed over us. There were dozens of them. And they, they looked wrong somehow. Like something had changed inside them. Insane or something. Oh, I'd have gone back to the surface long ago if this complex hadn't been overrun by all those crazy cell calves. There's no way for me to get to the submarine docking bay. I discovered a way to get to the bay and seal off the rest of the base. I just have to find the Colto Harvester they built on the edge of the Hracker Rift. It's got an emergency override to open the doors to the submarine docking bay. And I could get in from the outside. I figured my only chance was to slap on an environment suit, head out onto the ocean floor, and check that harvester out for myself. Besides, it's got to be safer out on the ocean floor than back in there with all those crazed cell calf mutants running around looking for dinner. I'm not spending another minute in this facility. Not with those psychotic fish people all over the place. I'm heading out to the ocean floor right now. It leads to another complex of buildings. Going through them is the only way to reach the Colto Harvester. We should probably stick together, but I won't wait around in here with the cell calf. You can catch up with me if you want, down the hall and through the doors on the right. I'll be waiting on the ocean floor where it's safe.
No, you can't come in here. You'll let the Faraxa and the Selkath in. No, stay out! Stay out! I'll let you open the door for those monsters to get in. I'll stop you. I'll suck all the pressure out of the chamber. That'll stop you. Kill them! Kill them now! Three <laughs> seconds to complete the pressurization. What? What do you want? The cell cab. I, I, I can't let you in. They'll get us. Yes, you're a friend. You'll protect us. You won't let the Paraxa eat us. You'll keep the cell cab away. I'll unlock the door, but you have to come in quickly. I, I'm sorry for what I did. Uh, I don't know what came over me. I, I, I just panicked when I heard someone outside the door. <sighs> Please forgive me. I'm just so scared. We're both just scared. When the cell cat went crazy, I thought everyone else except me and Sammy went mad. We had a few people outside the station when it happened. The Frax and Sharks just tore them apart. It was it was like they were frenzied. The next thing we knew, our cell cat researchers started screaming and and, and and clawing at everything around them. My team? My team was torn apart and eaten before my eyes. Sammy and me, I I thought we were the only ones left. We heard the cell cath outside the doors every once in a while, and those strange noises echoing through the base. We thought everyone was dead. Dead or insane. I must have been hysterical. I, I don't know what I can say. I truly apologize for the horrible mistake I was making. I'm Kono Nolan, and this is Sammy. We were scientists working here on the Harakard Rift project. We had a secret agreement with the moderates in the Selkath government. They knew that Manan could not survive independently if the Sith were victorious. Those thugs would wipe out the whole damn planet just to get at the Kulto. So the Republic approached them about making this secret installation to harvest more Kulto, where the Sith couldn't see us. But all that went horribly, horribly wrong. We don't know. Not for sure. The work teams were outside in the rift, near the vent. 
Then there was this rumbling, and my head felt like it was splitting open. This this monster rose up from the rift. It was a Firaxa shark, I think. Bigger than anything I'd ever seen before. Bigger than our submersibles. It was like it was screaming inside my head. Then all the Silkaths started screaming too. And they turned on us. It may. It may have been. Maybe it was protecting the ruins by the rift. It could have been. It might have a lair in the Heraklid Rift near the Kolto vent. Hmm. That might explain a few things, too. Like, why it reacted so violently when our construction efforts got closer to the vent. And also, why it's so large. It must be feeding off the Kolto. It would have to be ancient indeed for it to reach that size. But with Kolto as a food source... And all those other Firaxan sharks? Those might be its offspring. Which would be why they all swarmed when it called out to them. Children coming to protect their mother. But the Firaxan sharks have always been a serious problem. We had some blasters and projectile cannons to defend against them, but they still got some of our workers from time to time. We were working on a soluble chemical compound that would drive them away. Something that smelled or tasted repulsive to them, but we never got it working right. Oh, I think not. Even flawed like it is, it should be ideal for this situation. No, it's not working right. You don't know what it'll do. The repellent we made was supposed to drive Firax and sharks away, but we never got very far in its development. The one we tested instead was violently toxic to them, rupturing their outer skin in seconds and preventing them from drawing oxygen from the water by clogging their intakes. Which is exactly what we need in this situation. Something to kill that monster shark that destroyed our station. But we don't know how else the chemical reacts. We only tried it in a controlled environment. In the open ocean, who knows what it could do? It could even affect the Kolto. We know exactly what it'll do. It'll kill the shark. That's what we designed it to do. You can take this canister of toxin. We were working on it just before the giant shark drove all the Selkath insane. All you need to do is insert it into the main Kolto harvester and have it vented. Get away as soon as you can. We don't know how much worse it'll affect the giant Faraxan shark. Well, the monster seems to have been driven out by the machinery we installed at the edge of the rift. We've seen it out there on the cameras, bashing itself against the machines. I think if you could destroy the machinery we installed, the shark would calm down and retreat back into its lair inside the rift. You can reprogram the harvesting machines to overpressure their self-oxidizing fuel so that the fuel tank canisters will rupture and the entire machine will destroy itself. The hydroleum gas we use is a gas at 1 to 3 million sangin, a liquid at about 4 million sangin, and a solid above that. When it's a liquid, it's very explosive. If you inject enough of the hydroleum gas into the tank, the pressure will be so great that it'll turn to liquid form and start a chain reaction inside the machine. But, but we'll lose everything we've built here. All those years of work! It's better than whatever your chemical will do to the water. Good. Destroying the machinery will be better in the long run. We can't risk damaging the environment or the Kolto. You'll have to break into the computer on the harvesting machine and fiddle with the fuel injectors to get the tank pressure up to the point where the hydroleum will liquidize. Once the machinery is gone, the shark should leave. That won't work and you know it. We have to vent the toxin from the harvesting machine. Once the shark is dead, we can get back to mining the Kolto. You know what you have to do. I just hope you make the right choice.
How can I help? Then I said. Someone else had killed you and deprived me of the pleasure. You may have defeated the pathetic Valorant my master sent after you, but you are no match for me. I have studied at the foot of the Dark Lord himself. Your words mean nothing to me, unless you wish to beg for your life. No? Then I shall try to make this both quick and painful. Thank you. 
You've returned. I was beginning to fear that you too might have been lost. Did you find out what had happened down there at the facility? Insane. What did they do? And why? Something was down there? Living in the rift by the Colto? That's horrible. The entire operation wasted by a disaster we could never in a thousand years have foreseen. What has happened to the facility itself? Were there any survivors? Well, that's good to know. Good to know indeed. But what has happened to the facility? Was it damaged? No, that is terrible. That will set our work back years. It may even cost us the war. While I am glad that you were able to solve our problems, the cost may have ended up being much too high. But you have done your job and helped us in our time of need. And for that, I thank you. Oh, and did you end up finding your star map? As you can see, by helping us, you helped yourself. Perhaps we can work together again in the future.
be of assistance to you, Padawan. What is it you would like to speak to me about? After my father died, my mother was left to support me alone. A single, non-human woman, living in one of the worst, most violent slums on Terrace. It was not easy for her. When my father was killed, it seemed that something in her began to die as well. She worked. She worked as hard as she was able. Over time, she began to waste away. I later learned that she was unable to get enough money to feed both of us, and had to start borrowing from the exchange. A band of cutthroats and smugglers. But even that was not enough. She hid what she was doing from me. She gave most of her food to me so that I would be strong, but she herself was suffering deeply from it. In the end, she could go on no longer, and collapsed at the cantina where she worked one day. She never recovered. There was nothing really that I could do for her. She left me no money, and no doctor would see her without being paid first. I sat by her bed for days as she lay there dying. 
I never want that to happen to someone I care about ever again. But there was still the money she had borrowed. She had never paid it back and made no provisions for her death. You must understand. The exchange is brutal. They care nothing for the life of a sentient being. They are the major suppliers of slaves on Terrace. They thought it would be appropriate that, with my mother owing them money, the debt should be passed on to me. And with no way to pay, they took me by force. You have no idea what this is like to be bound like a beast and treated as such. It was the worst time of my life. They treated me like livestock. They were waiting for a buyer to give them some credits for me when the Jedi came to fight the Mandalorians. The Jedi could not abide by what they saw there and drove the exchange from the face of the world, freeing those of us imprisoned there. But the Jedi soon left to fight their war, and I was left with a dream. I swore that I would become a Jedi. As soon as I had enough money to do it, I bought passage on a freighter headed for Dantooine, and we both know what has happened since then. I am grateful to you for having given me the opportunity to fulfill my dream. Someday, I may make it up to you, but for now... How may I be of a... What is it? Of course. What do you need? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find dust. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could... How can I help? Can I suggest... They must have been waiting for us in the hyperspace room. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Carrot's vessel. My old mentor. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet, and a hero to me, until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, which is Saul Kareth's flagship, was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day, and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some magic. But if I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get in my way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. And I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. You can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Carroth doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. Just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. The Admiral will be watching the three of us far too closely for any plot involving you, me, or Karth to succeed. It's going to be up to one of the others to get us out of this. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. 
Well, the droid's right. If we disable him, the Sith will probably wipe his memory chips and take him to the junk pile. But if we can rig a backup memory chip with a timer, when it kicks in, the little fellow will be reactivated and he can come find us. Hold on, they're dragging us into the docking bridge. Bastila, Karth, and the crew have been taken prisoner as you ordered, Commander. Excellent. Have you searched the ship thoroughly? Admiral Karth warned me to be on alert for any kind of treachery. We found a disabled astromech droid in the back of the ship. Wipe its memory chips and take it to the junk pile. Maybe we can use some of its parts for salvage. Karth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I won't kill you for what you did to my own world. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. It was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, so, And for that, I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the Dark Side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Carath, as will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the Dark Side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. You're defiant. I'm certain Malak will find your loyalty to the Jedi amusing. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him and the history between you. You mean, oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malak is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. <laughs> Enough. I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malik will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Bastila will suffer. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? Very well. This is the price of your resistance. <coughs> Enough! You see what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the Academy was on Dantooine, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantooine is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. It doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. The fact remains that the Jedi on Dantooine have been eradicated, along with any hope of someone coming to rescue you. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? Do you take me for a fool? 
The Jedi are not assassins. They would never devise such a plan. Perhaps you need a reminder of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. Oh, no! Oh, no! Fing! Ah! Listen, can you not hear her suffering? You can spare her further pain by simply answering my questions. Now I will ask again, on what mission did the Jedi Council send you? Perhaps another lesson is in order. No! Ah, no! I beg you, no! Mercy! Ah, no! I am surprised she did not pass out sooner. Rarely have I seen someone withstand such punishment and remain conscious. I see I am wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. I will leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. Don't try to move too quickly. You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Karath had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Karth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. I fear he is forever lost. Yes. I suppose you're correct. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that hope in the face of such unbridled cruelty. But you speak the truth. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taras, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? I'd like to believe that Saul was lying to us. But even as he said the words, I knew they were true. The Academy is gone. We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger. Casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. And, uh, so, I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saul gets back. Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I have to confess something. There was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. I know you would never do anything to intentionally cause me pain, but you did the right thing. I don't honestly know if I could have been as strong in your position. To watch you suffer like that. It might have been too much for me to bear. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we are here now. Malak is coming. Well then we better hope T3M4 busts us out of here before he arrives.
What happened? What's going on? Sith interdictor ship. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Karath's vessel. When this I talk of well, maybe a each other. Well, it hold up. Bastila, car, exit with weapon. Car, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind. But did you learn that was in war? My wife, you used your in. We won't. Your work. Your diff. The dark. You mean that, however. Ah! Enough. Don't waste your. I'm sure. It is up the inter. I t Very well. Enough. This is done. It doesn't know. Deep back. Uh, no! Uh, Listen now. Perhaps a I, I will. Don't try to move. The dark. I suppose. And wish I can none of it. I have. I, I did you feel well, only
Droid. But when this is all over, I'm gonna see the Republic gives you a medal for your part in this. Now, if I remember the layout of the ship, our equipment should be in a storage chamber just through the north doors. After we grab our stuff, we need to get to the main bridge controls. The bridge is the only place that we can open the docking gates of the hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We have to open those gates before we can fly out of here. We better get moving. I can feel the darkness of Malak's presence approaching, and I don't want to be here when he arrives. None of us is a match for the Sith Lord. Surprise and secrecy will serve us best. A small group might have a better chance of sneaking onto the bridge undetected while the others make their way down to the Ebon Hawk. Count me in, then. I've got a score to settle with the Admiral before we get off this ship. And I have a feeling I'm gonna find him on the Leviathan's bridge. That's true, Karth. You can come, but don't let your hatred of Saul Karath jeopardize our true mission, getting the Ebon Hawk safely off the Leviathan. You better come with me and Karth. The others can find their way on their own, but we might run into trouble. We'll need you and your powerful Force abilities to deal with it. The three of us will get our equipment and make our way to the bridge. The rest of you head down to the docking hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. You'll have to find a way to deal with the guards. Don't you worry about that. 
I know how to deal with the guards. They won't know what hit them. We'll meet you there as soon as we get those docking bay doors open. Just make sure the Hawk is ready to fly when we get there. And may the Force be with you. Thank you. 